Supraclavicular exposure of the brachial plexus. Here is a view of the left posterior triangle of the neck. Incision is made obliquely along the posterior border of sternomastoid or horizontally curvilinear in the posterior triangle. The platysma is cut along its fibers and undermine or along the incision horizontally. We are identifying now the posterior border of the sternomastoid. This will be separated from the pad of fat. And along the posterior border of the sternomastoid, we can see the great auricular nerve winding around the muscle. This should be preserved to preserve sensation of the ear lobule. More cranial to that nerve and about a centimeter and a half, we can find the spinal accessory if needed. More caudally, we can dissect the omohyoid muscle which traverses the field horizontally and this muscle can be ligated and cut and then retracted proximally and uh, distally for better exposure. At the end of the procedure the muscle could be uh, restitched together with 2O etibon. With continued dissection of this fat pad, we're going to identify the suprascapular and transverse cervical vessels as we get closer to the clavicle. Careful identification of those vessels, then ligation and uh, transection of the vessels would avoid unnecessary bleeding and retraction of those vessels. Here the phrenic nerve is identified anterior to the scalenus anterior muscle. Then the upper trunk of the brachial plexus, which connects to the phrenic nerve through C5, is identified between the scalenus anterior and the scalenus medius. These are the divisions of the upper trunk, suprascapular nerve, cranially, Then the posterior division of the upper trunk. Then the anterior division of the upper trunk. And we can see just proximal to that is the nerve to subclavius. But the end of the upper trunk is almost looking like a trifurcation. Anterior division, posterior division, and suprascapular nerve. Just caudal and posterior to the upper trunk will find the middle trunk of the brachial plexus. And just caudal to that you can see the subclavian artery. In a slightly more posterior plane we can identify the lower trunk of the brachial plexus. Upper trunk, middle trunk, lower trunk, subclavian artery. anterior division of the upper trunk, posterior division of the upper trunk, suprascapular nerve. More proximally we can separate C5 from C6 as they make up the upper trunk and the phrenic nerve usually ends up in C5. The upper trunk again will divide into suprascapular nerve, posterior division, and anterior divisions. C7 is going to lead to the middle trunk, and finally C8 and T1 are going to join to make the lower trunk of the brachial plexus.